Hi everybody, today is October 2nd, 2019. It is 5 o'clock p.m., 92 degrees Fahrenheit, 33 degrees Celsius. I am currently at the Charging Bull statue, otherwise known as the Wall Street Bull. The artist was Arturo Di, uh, Di Matica, and it was installed in 1989, illegally as a matter of fact. Actually, it was right next to the New York Stock Exchange. But this is a very popular sculpture for everybody to line up and take pictures. And today I'm going to be taking you on a walk of the financial district all the way up to the Brooklyn Bridge. You see there's a long line over here for this bronze bull sculpture. It was actually damaged a few uh, weeks ago by some crazy person with a banjo. You can see the little gash on the uh, right forehead of the bull right next to the horn. It's a shame that the sculpture suffers such vandalism, but that's just the way it is in New York sometimes. I did hear that um, the sculpture is going to be repaired This right here is 26 Broadway at the corner of Bowling Green and Broadway. The financial district actually has a lot of history. I won't be able to cover everything in this video. But the name financial district is also synonymous with Wall Street. Since it is 5 o'clock, a lot of people are getting off of work, going home. Uh, a lot of people who work for the financial firms like JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, as well as a lot of other um, utility workers too, like all these fast food restaurants and um, office workers. Actually, the financial district was the original New York, known as New Amsterdam when it was settled by the Dutch. So this is where New York City started, historically. Here's a... Uh, tourist spot. You can get a lot of postcards here and t-shirts. A place to eat, the Fred of Manger. Fred of Manger. This building's home to a union, the United Federation of Teachers. <laughs> It's a shame that um, all these, all the scaffolding is here it really takes away from the neighborhood. But if the scaffolding wasn't here, across the street was the former home of the American Express Company, the same one which issues the credit cards and charge cards. But I'm going to make a right here onto Exchange Alley to visit the most famous corner of the financial district. forecast is a little bit overcast as well as quite warm during this time in October. It's actually very unusual that we have a 90 degree day in October or a 30 degree day Celsius. I'm just about to approach Broad Street.
So here is the most famous part of the financial district. Broad Street and Exchange Place. And up there is Wall Street, only one more block to the north. This here is a public plaza. There's no vehicles allowed. To my left here is the home of the New York Stock Exchange. Not much trading happens there anymore. In fact, uh, most of the trading happens in New Jersey and other sites that aren't um, in New York City. But there's a lot of history behind this building. If this was back in like the 1920s, you'll see tons and tons of people outside the stock exchange trying to go in, placing orders and yelling and screaming. Also, you'll see a lot more people in suits, but today it's a tourist haven. People here are taking pictures. It's got very, very interesting architecture. I believe it's Greek revival. It's actually the uh, world's largest stock exchange by market cap. It was built in 1903. Over here is the J.P. Morgan building, historically the J.P. Morgan building. Um, it sat vacant for many years because they couldn't find who the um, well, they know, they know who the owner was, but he uh, wasn't in the spotlight for a long time. But I think finally there is going to be some work done on this building. But here is where um, J.P. Morgan, the banker, famously came out of its doors across the street to the New York Stock Exchange and saved the market from collapsing. I believe this is in 1907 when the panic of 1907 happened. And look at this, there's a um, bit of writing about him. And I was correct, it was 1907 when he illustrated the, orchestrated the bailout of the New York Stock Exchange. So, how many of you knew that New York City used to be the capital of the United States? Well, it used to be from 1785 to 1790. This is the Federal Hall National Monument. It's actually the second Federal Hall. The current one, I believe, was built in the 1860s, if I'm not mistaken. But this is where George Washington became President of the United States, the first President of the United States. He took his oath here in 1789, April 30th. And that's a grand bronze sculpture of the first President of the United States. Okay, let's continue with this walk. I actually won't be going to the right. I'll be walking up Wall Street. Actually, I was close. I'm looking up uh, when Federal Hall, the current one, was built. It was built in uh, 1842. So I was about 20 years off. This in front of me is Trinity Church. It's actually a, an Episcopal church. A national landmark and it was built in um, 1839 to 1846. 
in the Gothic Revival style. Unfortunately, due to the scaffolding, it won't be a great view from here, but at least you can enjoy all the people walking by. This isn't the original Trinity Church. The original one was actually destroyed in the Great New York City Fire of 1776. But this is the third version of the Trinity Church. It's ongoing some interior renovations right now. Trinity Church. By the way, from that sign, Broadway is also co-named the Canyon of Heroes in this section due to the many um, parades that are often hosted around here, such as when the um, United States women's team won the World Cup. That's the women's soccer team or football team. There across the street is the Trinity Graveyard. It hosts many historical figures. Alexander Hamilton is buried in there as well as um, Robert Fulton who um, pioneered a major commuting empire with this ferry service. Alexander Hamilton was one of the founding fathers of uh, the United States. This is the AXA Equitable Building. I think it's actually just called the Equitable Building, but it used to be the tallest building in the uh, New York. Yeah, it's just called the Equitable Build Building. I'm getting it confused with the AXA Equitable Center, which actually was involved in a helicopter crash about a few months ago. But this is a 40 story building, the Equitable Building, located between Pine and Cedar Streets. It was designed and um, designed by the architect Ernest R. Graham. And it's very significant because it created the um, setback laws. Because this skyscraper was so tall, it created something that a lot of people never imagined. It actually blocked out a lot of the sun sunlight around the area. And because of it, there were laws put in place that when the buildings got too big, they were required to set back as uh, the building got higher and higher. That's why buildings like the Empire State Building get narrower as the floors get higher to allow for more sunlight. But this equitable building is de um, designed in the neoclassical style. Yeah, it 
was the 1916 zoning resolution that limited the height and required setbacks for the new buildings just so sunlight could be um, preserved. But that building was built in 1913 to 1915. Let me go and cross the street because the light's about to change. Here across the street is Zuccotti Park. This is where many of the uh, organizers and protesters of the Occupy Wall Street movement had its home base in 2011 in Lower Manhattan. But this is actually a privately owned public space controlled by Brookfield Properties and Goldman Sachs created in 1968 by United States Steel. On another note, this area back in 2001 when the Twin Towers fell and the uh, September 11 attacks happened suffered major damage. There was dust all over the place and there was a big reconstruction effort to bring this um, area back to its former glory. Now, in addition to the financial firms, you do have retail stores as well. Across the street is the Gap, the clothing retailer. There's also a vitamin shop. And over here on this corner is the Century 21 department store. Very, very big Century 21, if I might add. You can also see it used to be a uh, part of this building too, except the um, the wording is all faded out now. This is Portland Street. If I go down, uh, down over there that direction further, I'll hit the World Trade Center complex. That also hosts a shopping mall called the Oculus Shopping Mall otherwise known as Brookfield. No, it's called Westfield. And then on the other side on West Street, it's called Brookfield. But the two shopping centers are uh, connected with each other. The World Trade Center also hosts the uh, One World Trade Center, otherwise known as the Freedom Tower, the tallest building in New York City and in the United States. Here's the Fulton Street and Cortland Street subway station. The biggest subway station in the area. It received a over $1 billion renovation with this Fulton Center across the street. There's also a Shake Shack on the top floor. If you're ever hungry, you can visit the Shake Shack. This is 195 Broadway, former home of the American Telephone and Telegraph Company, known today as the surviving company of AT&T. So if you have a phone from AT&T, this used to be the headquarters. It also used to be the headquarters of Western Union for a time, not only AT&T.
This over here is St. Paul's Chapel, the oldest continually occupied building in New York City. It's also part of uh, Trinity Church. But you can see here there's a cemetery, a little tiny cemetery here. This chapel is also nicknamed as the little chapel that stood built in 1766. It's designed in the Georgian style. Unfortunately, it's under construction now and not accessible for the public or it's closed for a parish event. George Washington was a frequent visitor to this chapel. Here we have a street performer hustling for some change and some money. Now I've actually crossed over into the Civic Center. I will cross the street over here. So a little bit of history about Park Row. This is the street I'm walking on, Park Row. It's named for the fact that it faces City Hall Park across the street, which is right there. But it was also nicknamed Newspaper Row due to the many newspapers which had their headquarters here. So newspaper row, head, uh, park row. But there's many institutions that you may re uh, recognize still. Companies such as the New York Times, New York Tribune, and the New York World. This over here used to be the tallest building in the world, the Woolworth Building. It's actually designed in a Gothic style. Unfortunately, it's not as impressive anymore due to the tallest skyscrapers around here, but Let's get continue on to the Park Row towards the Brooklyn Bridge, just like I stated. But that building, the Woolworth Building, was built to house the headquarters of the Woolworth Company. Bus driver is certainly pushy and wants to get moving. So you can see a lot of new buildings along Park Row. This uh, red building over here, I believe, is the oldest building on Park Row currently. There's a lot of traffic here, my gosh. 
This here is City Hall Park with its amazing fountain in the middle. New York City Hall is one of the oldest continuing operated city halls in the country. That's not all. Actually, it is the oldest building uh, which still does governmental functions. <laughs> Maybe I can get a glimpse of our mayor, Bill de Blasio, coming out of the front door. It was constructed in 1803 to 1813, 1812, and it's a New York City landmark. Here you can see there's a two-way bike lane. This was recently installed, pretty recent, and it allows people to go to and from the Brooklyn Bridge. Although it does take up a little bit of space from the traffic lanes, but overall it makes the streets a lot safer. And I like the design very much. Looks like there's some kind of event happening in City Hall right now. Do you have a YouTube channel? I do. I watch it. Action Kid, that's yeah, my username. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I can recognize your voice. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing uh, Financial District of Brooklyn Bridge, so this video is almost over now. Oh, nice. I saw yeah. the one about the Magnolia Street you did, bro. Mm -hmm. So it's worth area and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Tutorial. Thank you. Wow, so another person I ran into who knows my uh, YouTube channel. Very cool. This here is the Manhattan Municipal Building, recently renamed the David Dinkins Municipal Building. This houses uh, most of the New York City governmental agencies. But if you want to know more about this uh, building, you can check out my narrated walk of City Hall and the Civic Center. Here I am at the Brooklyn Bridge, or the entrance of the Brooklyn Bridge, rather. But this was the original bridge which linked uh, New York to Brooklyn. Originally, it was called the East River Bridge. Originally um, designed by John Roebling, but it was actually finished by his wife, Emily Roebling. And there was a lot of sacrifices that had to be made to make this bridge. The construction methods weren't the best back in the time, back in the day when it opened. It was completed in 1883. It's a hybrid cable and stayed suspension bridge design, but I don't have time to walk the complete Brooklyn Bridge today. I'll save it for a future uh, adventure. But if you enjoyed watching this video and learning from it, be sure to give me a big like down below, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you all next time. It does look like it's threatening the rain, so really, really hope it doesn't right now because I'm not prepared for it. No umbrella. That's the only time I don't like the rain when I have no umbrella, but see you later.